Today we are talking about what are called basic derivative rules. I'm going to probably go into more detail than they have been doing in physics. Physics, they just show you the shortcuts. I'm going to now show you kind of why they work. Okay? So, this is AKA, shortcuts for derivatives. I used an example last period, but I have a better one this time. Do you remember back in Algebra 2 or Pre-Cal when you learned the log rules? And when you had like log of A times B, and when you separated it, it became, became addition, which was kind of weird. It, it just didn't seem right, but it was the way that it worked. A lot of what we're going to be doing today is going to seem a little weird. It just doesn't seem like mathematically that's what you're supposed to do. But after you've done it for a while, it's just going to become sec second nature. And it's things that work with derivatives. As Newton and Leibniz were working through all these longhand derivatives like you were doing, they started seeing patterns, emer patterns emerging. And those patterns are what become the shortcut rules. So we don't have to do the f of x plus h every time for a derivative. There's just a way you can get it in one step. And that's what we're going to be talking about. Now, it only works on certain functions. It works on polynomials. Polynomials are like 5x cubed minus 6x squared plus 2x plus 3. Polynomials, okay? It works on some rationals and on some radicals. And these three type of functions they're talking about all fall into one category. Pre-AP studied it as part of a unit last year. Regular, we didn't talk about it. But all you're going to need to know for this, I'm going to teach you right now. It's going to be a good review. It's called a power function. These are actually today called the power rules because they work on power functions. And a power function is a function that looks like this. All you really need to know is that it's y equals a times x to the power of b. They all have to look like that. And a and b can be any real number. So it could be 2x to the third, or 1 half x to the negative 3, or 5x to the 1 half. The a and the b can be any number you want. It could be x to the square root of 3 if you wanted. We're not going to get that difficult today, but that's what's possible. So every problem we do today is going to look like this. And if it doesn't look like this, you're going to have to make it look like this. Okay? So here are what are called the power function rules. Dot, dot. We're going to have three columns. We're going to have a rule column. We're going to have an example column. And we're going to have a graph column. Now, we're only going to do graphs for a couple of them. But the graphs kind of help you see what we're talking about. Now, these are rules that could show up on another formula quiz down the line. So, but once you get the hang of them, they... They're just second nature. First one, d over dx, parentheses, c, parentheses, equals. I'm not going to tell you what it equals just yet. Do you remember what this symbol means? It means derivative. So they're taking the derivative of a constant. Now, what's a synonym I told you for derivative? What is it showing you on a graph? It's showing you slope. So what is the slope of a constant graph? A, graph be, a constant graph being a graph that's horizontal. What's the slope? What's the slope of this line? The slope is zero. When it's flat, it's zero. So the derivative of a constant is zero, and you just need to memorize that. So if the function is y equals 6, for example, you can just instantly say that the derivative y prime would be zero. No work involved. You don't have to do an f of x plus h, f of x, all that good stuff. It's right there. It's just zero because it's a constant. And graphically, it makes sense. If you have a flat line like I showed you with my pen, the slope of that line will be zero. 
That's why the derivative is zero, because derivative means slope. Couldn't you say it was zero in one range if you move down to the curves? Say that one more time. Well, if the slope is zero, it wouldn't even move. Like, you know how you run, like, the same, you run before you jump or something like that? Right, rise over run. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're not going up anymore, but you're still going. Oh, yeah, so it's zero over three, which is zero, or zero over five, which is zero. It's still zero, yeah. no matter where you start. Yes. Okay. Just for me and for emphasis, I'm going to switch back and forth from colors here. So the d over dx of x equals. So this is saying the derivative of x. Or, let's jump over to the graph, the slope of that line right there, y equals x. What's its slope? 1. The slope is 1. The slope is 1. So, another one to memorize. Whenever you say the derivative of an x, it's just a 1. So, if the problem is y equals x, the derivative will be 1. You just need to memorize that. Number 3 is what is, is officially called the power rule. Now, if your parents happen to have taken calculus in high school or college, this is probably the one thing they remember from college calculus, even if they took it 20 years ago. I mean, you took Algebra 1, what, four or five years ago, and you still remember y equals mx plus b, don't you? This is the one formula that most people, they don't remember the formula, but they remember how to do it. So if you went home and said, what's the derivative of this, they can do it, probably. So let's do an example, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Here's the formula, d dx of x to the n power. So when you're taking the derivative of an x to any power you want, it's going to equal n, which means you bring the power to the front, times the x to the n minus 1 power. So what happens is it's kind of like the exponent falls to the front as a coefficient, then you write the x, and the exponent then drops by 1. Okay, so if you went home and asked your parents what's the derivative of x squared, they probably could tell you because they remember the shortcut. So the exponent of 2 moves to the front. You write the x again, and then the exponent drops by 1 to a 1. So the derivative of x squared is 2x. What would the derivative of x to the fourth b. 4x to the third. Does that make sense? Okay, now let's do another one. We're done graphing. We're just going to do another example. What would the derivative of x to the negative third be? x negative 3, x to the negative 4. You see how that works? You bring the, x, the exponent to the front, rewrite the x, drop the power by 1. That's the power rule. And that's what most people walk out of calculus and at least they remember that much. Because it's really not that hard once you get used to it. Okay. Now, number four. D dx parentheses f of x plus or minus g of x equals, and I'm going to write the rest of it below it so I don't run out of room. f prime of x plus or minus g prime of x ddx of f of x plus or minus g of x equals f prime of x plus or minus g prime of x. Does anybody want to take a stab at what that means? You just add their slopes. You just add their slopes together. What do you, what, you're, you're on the right track. What slope? I mean, wait, why are you talking? There's multiple slopes. Okay, because I have two functions here, right? You're saying that I just take the slopes of each one. Is that what you're trying to tell me? Yeah. You're right. You're right. So this says if I'm supposed to take the derivative of this long problem, lots of terms in it, I'm supposed to just take the derivative of each one individually. That's what it's saying. So when you have, more, if it's not just x squared, let's say it said x squared plus 5x plus 2, I take the derivative of the x squared, 
then the derivative of the 5x, then the derivative of the 2. Okay? So, for example, let's do one of these. So if the function is x cubed minus x squared plus 3, three different power rules or power functions added together, you just take the derivative of each one, one at a time. That's what it's saying. So what's the derivative of x third, x to the third? 3x squared. There's the first one done. The signs never change. Well, they might, unless if it was like minus a power of negative. But here, the, the sign just comes down. What's the derivative of x squared again? 2x. We just did that one. Now, what's the derivative of a 3? 0, because the derivative of a constant is always 0. You can write the plus 0, or you can leave it off. You don't have to write it down. So I put it in a parenthesis to note that you could write it, or you can forget it. Just remember that the derivative of a constant is a zero. Questions? Okay, I have one more. Number five. Move it up. D over dx, parentheses, k times f of x equals k times f prime of x. Why are we using d over dx? Because the f of x is always in here, and the only way to write the derivative of this, especially because we're doing multiple things, is to put the d over dx outside. So you can't put y prime? No, because the y prime and f of x mean the same thing. It's like multiplying two of them together. You have to do it this way for the, for the function you, for the formula you do. Okay, what does this mean? What this means is if you're taking the derivative of a constant times, times a function, the constant basically just sits there, and you take the derivative of the function. Did this k change at all? Did it go away? No, it sat there, and then you took the derivative of the function. Okay, so let's do one of these. This takes care of that a in the front. So if you had 7x squared for your function, the k is the 7, so y prime would be, you write the 7 down, then you take the derivative of the x squared. And what's the derivative of x squared again? 2x. And then clean it up. So what does that clean up to be? 14x. Okay. Now, do you see a quick way to go to step 3 from step 1? Yes. That x, that when the 2 comes down, if there's something there, just multiply them together. That's what you got to remember. That's the shorter shortcut. Okay? So what if it had been... 5x squared, what would the answer be? The derivative would be 10x. Okay. What if it had been 5x to the third, what would the derivative be? 15x squared. Are you, are you picturing what's happening here? The 3 comes down and multiplies to the 5, and then the power drops. Okay. This is kind of weird math, isn't it? That you just can throw an exponent in the front, but that's the way derivatives work. Okay. Now, we're going to spend the rest of the notes time doing some examples of this. Okay, so I'm going to change pages, and we will move on to some examples. Move it down. The examples. Find the derivative. y equals 4x squared minus 3x plus 2. Now I'm actually starting with one that I think you can do already by yourself. So right now, try to do that one. Try to do that one right there. I'm incorporating all the different rules that we talked about from the front. When you're done, check with the rest of the people at your table and see if you got the same answer they did. Okay, I'm going to silently write the answer up here so you can look up here and see if you got it right. Okay, what's in parentheses does not have to be there. And actually, I'd like you to get in the habit of not writing it down. Okay? But I wrote it this one time. Are there any questions? Okay, we're doing wonderfully on time yet again, which I'm so excited about. Okay, next problem. Y equals 4 over 5x to the fourth. 
Okay. In order to use the power rules, you have to have a power function. And a power function, remember, is a number times an x to a power. This is a number divided by a number times an x to a power. So this, right now, the way it looks is not going to work with the power rule. Okay? So what I need to do is I need to rewrite this in another way. I need to write it as a number times an x to a power. So what I'm going to do is take the, just the x to the fourth, and I'm going to actually move it up off the bottom of the fraction. So my number in the front is four-fifths. I have an x. And what power is that x really? It's negative four. Okay. Remember that the way negative exponents work is whenever in Algebra 2 and Pre-Cal, when you saw a negative exponent, what did you always do? You threw it on the bottom of the fraction. Now for calculus, what we have to do is take it out and put it up because that's the only way we can take its derivative. Okay? So it had an exponent of negative 4 before you moved it down, so we're going to pull it back up where it was. Now it's a times x to the b, and I can take the derivative this way. Another very important thing. Did I write y prime here? No, because I have not lowered that power down yet. This is still y. It's just a rewrite of y. So now y prime equals, and you better be writing y equals and y prime equals in the right places when you do this. So bring that power down, multiply it to that fraction, what would it be? Negative 16 over 5, x to the what power? Negative 5. Okay. My rule is the answer when you're done has to look like the original problem did. The original problem had no negative exponents. So I need to make this have no negative exponents. So it's going to be y prime equals, I need to take that x, put it back on the bottom of the fraction, 16 over 5x to the fifth. And that's finished. Is the whole thing still oh, I forgot about the negative. Thank you. Good catch. Forgot about that. Okay, it's the same way. Okay, do you agree that 4x over 5 is the same thing as 4 fifths x? Yes, that's what I did. It doesn't have to go to the numerator, it can go out to the side. Just like I said, 4 fifths x and 4x over 5 are the same thing. It can go either place. Oh, okay. So if you were to write it the other way, it's still be right. Well, yes, but you really want it to be a number times an x to a power if, to make it look in the power format. Another question, anybody? All right, let's try another one. Moving up. Y equals the cube root of x to the fourth. The cube root of x to the fourth. Okay. That is definitely not a power. That's a root. So the first thing I've got to do is write it as a power. Now this is review. Say it again, Chris. This is x to the four thirds. Power over root, that's the rule. Whenever you see a radical and then you has an exponent on the inside, it's power over root. The way to remember it is this. Where are the roots of the tree? On the bottom. So the root number goes on the bottom, okay? So it's x to the 4 over 3. Now we write y prime because now we're ready to bring the exponent down. So it's going to be 4 over 3 x to the what power? Be careful. 1 third. Are you with me? Okay. I started with radicals. I need to end with radicals. So I need to put that back in a root. So y prime will be 4 thirds is it, what kind of root is this? It's a third root, again, x to the first, and I'm done. You don't need the one exponent if you don't want it. Instead of writing y prime, you just put y prime one equals this, then use this. On your final answer, I would like the y prime, but yes. If there's multiple steps in between, definitely, you can do that. All right? Okay, what time are we going to? All right, let's do this one y equals one half x to the third minus six x minus 
5 over x. This is one I'm going to start with you, and then I'm going to let you finish it. All right. Is this first term in the correct format to take its derivative? Yes. A times x to the b. What about the second term? Is it okay? What about the third term? Nope. Third term's not good. I can't have an x on the bottom. It has to be moved up. So the first step is going to be to take this, recopy the first two. Don't take the derivative of two terms and then change the third one. You've got to take the derivative all at the same time. So 1 half x to the third minus 6x minus, how do I rewrite this? 5x to the negative 1. Remember, negatives are what they become when you move them up. Okay. Now, I want you to finish it, take the derivative, and then put it back in this format when you're done. So go ahead and try the rest of this problem yourself. Take the derivative of each term and then make it back into the non-negative fraction exponents. Okay, y prime equals 1 half, oops, what am I doing? 3 halves x squared minus 6 plus 5x to the negative 2, agreed? So y prime equals 3 halves x squared minus 6 plus 5 over x squared. Are we in agreement? Yes. Okay, one last quick problem because this is on your quick quiz on Monday. Find the equation of the tangent line of f of x equals x squared plus 6x at x equals 1. Okay. Very quick way to do this. Find the equation of a tangent line of a function at x equals 1. In order to write the equation of a tangent line, the equation of any line, what are the two pieces of information you need? You need a, well, you need a y and an x, but you also need one more thing. You need a slope. You need a point and a slope. Okay? Here's the x coordinate of my point, 1 comma something. How am I going to find the y? Plug it into there. What do you get? You get 7. Okay? Now, I need a slope. How do I find the slope? You take the derivative. So the derivative of this would be, with the shortcut, 2x plus 6. Agreed? Now, the slope is going to be taking the 1 and plugging it in there. What are you going to get for a slope? 2 plus 6, Two plus six which is 8. Do you see how I got that? So you plug the 1 into the original. Oh, shoot. I didn't get you finished. Then you just write the equation of the line from there. That's all you got to do. Uh -huh. Y minus 7 equals 8 parentheses X minus 1. Done. The end.